everyone. Sonia here, and you are watching Pouring with Sonia. And I just did a really fun beachy themed pour based on watching some of Julie Cutts' videos, Pouring Your Heart Out. Shout out to her. This is These are all her colors. And um, I'm trying to do some pours that I think you could do use some of the products that you can find readily at like a CVS or someplace that might be open. So what I have are some student grade paints. I just have, these are just, these are from, you can order them from dicklick.com. Very reasonably priced. I get a lot of my supplies there. But these are the acrylic paints, which are all student grade. So I have the um, turquoise, plain turquoise, the acrylics. Then I have the raw umber. Then I mix some raw umber with white to come up with the tan. And then I mixed some phthalo blue with phthalo green to come up with this fun, beautiful turquoise. So that's what I've got for the paints. And then Artist Loft Flow Acrylic, the white, um, is what I'm using for my white. I have to move all this paint out of the way because I have a very small little work surface here and this is a 16 by 20 canvas. So it takes up almost all my space. <laughs> so um, my pouring medium is 70% glue. I just use the Elmer's Glue All. Again, I wanted to try and use some products that you could find at any CVS. Um, so you could maybe have some fun with your kids while you're at stay-at-home orders or, or you know, just anytime. Of course, we can use the kids as an excuse, but we like to paint too. <laughs> so it's 70% glue, Elmer's glue wall, and 30% water. And then that is mixed roughly one-to-one -one with the paints. Um, so I mix up the paint, and I want to get a consistency where... Um, it's leaving a little bit of a mound. So I hope that you can see that. So when it drizzles off the stick pretty easily, but it leaves a little bit of a mound before it drops down. It's not super thick, but it doesn't disappear right away. It leaves a little bit of a mound. Um, and new to this is the fact that, again, trying to not, you don't have to go to a hardware store or anything you can just go to CVS and get some coconut milk anti-breakage serum oops I touched it with my messy glove it's the coconut milk anti-breakage serum that you can use what you're really looking for is the dimethicone that's the main ingredient in this the dimethicone is what reacts with the heat because I'm going to use a torch and um, when I apply the heat to this then the oil will come up through the paint and create these really fun cells. That's the goal. And so this is a 16 by 20 canvas to come up with the amount of paint that I need. Actually, I should have mixed up a little more. I was a little tight on that last one. Um, but I go length times width and then divide by 16. Well, this is a 16 by 20, so that's pretty easy. I need 20 ounces of paint. So I have about three and a third ounces of each color um, and about six ounces of the white. Um, what I'm going to do then is add one drop of this coconut oil. I squirted the coconut oil in here so that, because with this kind of pump, you know, where you're, you could easily get a big squirt in there. And I don't want that. I just want it, I want it to be drops, not squirts. So I've got about three and a third. I'm going to do three drops in each color. One, two, three. Maybe four in that one because I love it. <laughs> uh, one, two, three. I got a hair here. Hold on, let me get that off. Okay. Three drops here. One, two, three. One, two, three, and just a little extra, half a drop. Now my white, I'm going to put five or six drops in because I have more paint. One, 
two, three, four, five. I'll just do five. Okay. Now I want to mix this up pretty good. I want it to get all the way to that paint that's at the bottom of my cup and not just sit on top. A lot of times, um, or what I have done, not a lot of times, but what I've done before is flip it out and then I stretch it and then I find one spot on my canvas that where the paint doesn't seem to be sticking to the canvas. And that's because a big glob of silicone or your oil, it touched the canvas first and now the paint won't stick. So if you don't mix it up enough, that could happen. And I just wanna kinda get, eat. a lot of people um, will say to the contrary, they don't, they just do like a one, two, three, and then that's it. Uh, Cause they want their oil to create big juicy cells. And I'm not sure, I don't know what the right answer is. I'm gonna mix it up cause I don't want to get a big glob of oil somewhere. Okay, I just love blues and browns together, but I think I like turquoise and browns even better. So what I want to do for this one, oh, one more thing that I did that's a little different is I sprayed my cups with, I sprayed them with some silicone lubricant also. Uh, I don't normally do that. I just did that today. Um, it's got a lot of strong vapors so I only do it when it's uh, warm enough for me to open the windows in my area here and it's been cold but since it was warm I thought Shh, I just a tiny bit of spray like you're gonna spray a muffin pan Shh, sh, sh, sh. that's all you do and that just helps the paint to release out of the cups a little better so that's something new I'm doing today also the last pour I did because my experiment today was to um, this again, Julie Cutts did on her pouring her heart out. She did one where she layered the paints, which is where you pour the paints in in such a way where they sit on top of one another. And then um, a dirty pour, where I'm gonna pour them in and the paints are gonna kind of mix in the cup. So this one is gonna be the dirty pour, where I just, I'm gonna pour a little bit of paint in each one. And the colors, Okay, I'm gonna pour it from kind of high so that it just drops down. Well, the hope is that it just drops down. <laughs> I'm not trying to layer it. And I will do two layers of this. There we go, that one dropped down. So it's kind of mixing in to the other colors as it's dropping into the cup. Real dirty pour, or a waterfall pour. I don't know what the right term is. That blue is, turquoise is staying right on top, but the rest of these are dropping down, which is what I was going for, just as part of the experiment. So these colors are all gonna mix the color in there then I'm gonna flip them, which is gonna mix them even more. Okay, and one more layer. You can see now that there's not as much weight behind it. It's kind of layering. That's okay. I'm going to scrape that in there. Maybe I better start with the paint on this side next time so it 
really pushes that paint down in there, huh? That's what I better do. Because this is kind of layering down here now. And I don't have gravity pulling as much down. Okay. Oh, I was supposed to have the white in two layers. Well, I messed up. I sure did. That's what I get for not splitting the white into two cups. So I'd remember to put it in two places. Because it's supposed to go between this dark brown and the light brown. I remembered on the first layer, but not on this one. At least I think I did. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know now. I might not have remembered. Uh... I like having these clear cups so I can see if I've got roughly the same amount of paint in each cup. Kind of helps. Okay, now for this beautiful, I love this turquoise. And when you're mixing it yourself, you can make it as blue or as green as you want, you know? You can have a real green turquoise or a blue turquoise or whatever you want. I went with a little bit more of a deep blue. But you know how sometimes you get that really neat turquoise green? Just add a little more green than blue. And you can mix it up and have some fun. All right. That's the boring part. It's all done now. I'm gonna flip these cups out. Oh, that was a little slow. Okay. And with the silicone oil sprayed in the bottom of the cup, hopefully I will see them release from there and we'll know we're ready to flip and drag. Well, we flipped it, I mean lift it and drag it down. Kind of spooged a lot on these. Torch ready. Oh, I can see that this one released. Oh, I can see this one starting to release. Ah, I can start to see. It's kind of fun. <laughs> with the silicone in the cups because I can see it's all let go. It's all down here now. That one has, that one's let go. This one's the only one I don't see, but I see a little bit here, so now I know. So, you know, I don't have the spooched over the edge a lot here, so I don't have that really pretty mixing right there. And I'm spooched up there too. <laughs> so you can see the difference where it leaked out under my cup and where it stayed and mixed in my cup. And I'm just kind of trying, the corners are often kind of hard to get. So I'm just going to kind of get a little bit of paint covering them. Okay, there are our cups. <sighs> I have the least amount of paint down here, so I'm gonna, ah, oh, it's stuck, because the tops of my cups are wet from the last one that 
I did. Turn it around this way to start. And maybe I will get this out of the way for now because I'm going to be tilting that way. Okay, so last time I had a little bit of trouble getting these sides covered as well. So let's just get it to the edge. Get it to the edge and just start walking it down here. The edge, edge, and corner, and right down here, corner. Okay, now I'm going to turn it around. And the reason I wanted to kind of put some of those little stripies on the corners is so I didn't feel like I had to get over those corners. I have some little design there, but a lot of times, unless you've got like a corner catcher, you'll lose a lot of your paint. So now I'm going to apply some heat and try and get some of those cells to come up. Oops. Keep doing that. I'm not sure why. Ah, torch problems. The struggle is real. Okay. It's the heat that reacts with the oil, like I said, and creates these fun little spots where the oil comes up through the colors. And you hopefully will get some kind of multicolored stuff that comes up then. I don't mind having some areas without cells, so I'm going to kind of keep some areas without them. Like, I don't mind this. I like that there, and this here, and a little bit up here. This has it everywhere. That's where I started off and was having a little bit of trouble. So, that's okay. But I got a really long, stripey thing there I don't like. I've got a couple caterpillars in this one. I didn't have in my last one, which I really don't like. But, oh well. We'll see how it goes. The caterpillars sometimes turn into unfortunate shapes <laughs> and if you've ever had that happen the caterpillars can sometimes turn into male anatomy shapes <laughs> that we don't want to see in our paintings so what I'm trying to do here is just kind of go up and down stretch these cells out but still kind of keep them circular This way towards you. Okay, and now I have to go over the corner there. Okay, and we'll come back this way. And get to this corner. And I want to get that off the edge there because I can. All right, well, I don't know. Which one I like better? Um, I think I might like this one better. I got more multicolored cells and stuff. So, now I can take my gloves. Well, actually, let me get these corners real quick before I take my gloves off. So I'm gonna just grab some paint that dripped off, get these corners. With the same colors. Get here. And 
Let me make sure. Okay, that one's all fine. That's fine. So now I can take my gloves off. So I like um, having some areas without cells. That's why I didn't go in and really torch a lot here or right there because I wanted to have some areas where there's, there's kind of a background to the cells that were coming up. So let's have you come down. Hopefully I'm not covering this. And have a look. Up close. So this one, I've got a lot of multicolored cells because the color's all mixed in the cup. So I've got like this light sand with the darker blue. I don't know. I just got a lot of different shading, I think. Oh, here. Maybe turn this off. Is that better? Can you see better? All right. <laughs> it's kind of neat looking. So multicolored. I really like this little band here. And I like how, okay, it's really busy here with all of these cells, but then you have a little bit of a break of relief. And you just have this kind of soothing area. So really exciting. And then just above it, a nice soothing area, which I kind of like. Just that little bit of difference in this 16 by 20 painting that you can have something exciting like that. And then your eyes kind of have a relief of, oh, isn't that just beautiful and pretty and soothing? And, and you have something really exciting like all of these. And then, oh, look at that beautiful little wave there. So I don't know. I like it. I don't have much background down here. It's all pretty busy. Tiny bit there, but that's about it. That's where I was having trouble with my torch and I was not paying as much attention. But So there it is. There's the dirty pour where I didn't layer the paints. They kind of all went in and mixed together in the cup. Exact same colors, um, same proportions of the oil and everything else as this one. And this one... I got my um it's also very very nice pretty I don't know they're very similar right they're very similar I think I just got more of the streaky soothing colors blended that I like on the other one but I mean they're both pretty neat they both remind me of kind of an ocean type of colors and oops I guess the window is giving too much of a glare. So definitely kind of an ocean feel, a water feel, a beach feel. And then here, an ocean feel, a water feel, a beach feel. I don't know if you have a preference for one over the other, the layered versus the dirty cup. Let me know. Um, I think I just kind of like how I see the brown underneath the blue. Then then I have the brown with a little bit of the tan. I don't know. I don't know. They're both really nice. But if you've watched this far, thank you very much for watching. Please give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and we'll try different uh, experiments. And again, shout out to Julie Cuts. Thank you for giving this color palette. I love it. Love, love, love it. And for the experiment of the layering the colors versus the dirty pour. I like to do it myself. So um, until I see you all again, have fun painting. Bye, everyone.